It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the Miami Marlins. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Tuesday evening to you, wherever you may be. We're at Dodger Stadium, second game of the three-game series, also the fifth meeting of the year between the two teams, and they have split the previous four. On the mound, on each side, very hungry pitchers. Let's start with the Dodgers. Josh Beckett hasn't won a game since he beat Colorado back in 2012. He is 0 for 14, still looking for that win, although this year he's had six starts. His earned run average is 2.8, and yet he is 0 and 1. And on the other side of the coin, you take uh, Jacob Turner, a youngster who came over to the Marlins in a deal with Detroit that sent Annabelle Sanchez to the Motor City. Jacob Turner is another kid hungry for a win. On the road, no wins in nine starts, so he's trying to pick up number one tonight. For the Dodgers and for the Marlins, they'll be watching the Atlanta Giants game. Giants still lead the Dodgers by four and a half and Atlanta two in front of the Marlins. So a lot going on. Pull up a chair. It's going to be a good one. Dodgers and the Marlins coming up and a whole lot more right after this. inside Dodger Stadium as the fans get prepared for game two between the Marlins and the Dodgers and game one was all about Yasiel Puig a big three run home run helped lead his team to a victory in game one and Yasiel has seven home runs so far in 34 games and not only do they get out at rocket pace he wastes no time in the box look at the pitch count as far as his career home runs are concerned 
12 have come on the first pitch. Six have come on either an 0-1 or a 1-0 count. Four of them have come on a 2-2 count. Bottom line, Puig doesn't waste any time leaving the yard. A couple of other injury updates for you. Starting catcher A.J. Ellis played two days in a row for Triple A Albuquerque. He is not activated today, but it could be as soon as tomorrow or Friday after the off day on Thursday. As far as Juan Uribe is concerned, Don Mattingly says he wants to buy a little bit more time. They'd like to bring him back against the Arizona Diamondbacks in that series this weekend. He is available to pinch hit or come in in a double switch situation. As far as Hyunjin Ryu is concerned, he threw a 40-pitch bullpen session, and they will wait and see how he feels after that to determine the next step. As far as this one is concerned, a big one here tonight with Josh Beckett on the hill for the Dodgers and Jacob Turner on the hill for the Marlins. The great Vince Scully on the call after this. We'll have a crowd around 50,000 and the evening already started off on a lovely touch because we did not know until she arrived Maritza Puig that would be Asiel's mom was here to throw out the first pitch and then another thing we didn't know about and that was very pleasant we will uh, be quiet for the moment. This becomes a rather historic mom and son moment at Dodger Stadium as Maritza and Yasiel walk just behind home plate. And Yo, then you'll and hear. Maritza. Fan, it's time for Toya Baseball. Let's go. There you go. Much to the delight of the crowd. A lovely way to start the night. It's the Dodgers and the Miami Marlins on a beautiful evening, albeit on the warm side. But after all, it's the beginning of summer. And for the Braves up north, they'll be playing the Giants. Mike Miner going for Atlanta. Ryan Vogel song for the Giants. The Giants have won 14 out of 18. The Braves have lost 9 of 13. Mike Redman brought his ball club in here. There's still only two games behind Atlanta. And here's his lineup. Christian Yelich, a local boy from Thousand Oaks, leads off. Then you have Adene Echevarria at short. Giancarlo Stanton in right and Casey McGee at third. Jared Zaldamalakia will be behind the plate. Garrett Jones at first. Marcelo Suna, Derek Dietrich, and Jacob Turner, the pitcher. And Christian Yelich in there. Shows bunt, tries to bunt, and fouls it. And they count no balls in one strike. Last night, 
Christian Yellers hit the first pitch of the game from Dan Harron and single to right. And then he stole second, went to third on a fly ball, and came home on a ground ball. Then the next time up, he had a home run on a three and two pitch. So Beckett ready in the strike one pitch to young Christian. That's pulled back at first. Backhanded by Gonzalez, feeding his man coming over. And Beckett gets the put out. Play going 3 1. Yelich hit the ball hard. One down. We'll check the Dodgers with the leather. And they shape up this way Crawford, Kemp, and Puig in the outfield. The infield of Turner, Ramirez, Gordon, Gonzalez. And the battery would be Beckett and Drew Butera. Crawford. And Andre Ethier going in and out of the lineup. Ethier had one base hit last night, so Crawford plays tonight. The number two hitter in the lineup would be Echeverria, who is hitting 273, a very flashy, a very terrific shortstop, right hand batter, first ball swinging, fouls it away, and the count 0 and 1. So Echeverria. Who certainly will be playing shortstop for many, many years for the Miami Marlins. They're not the only ones high on him. Every scout who has ever seen him play just raves about his defensive ability. Takes an off speed pitch away, and they count one ball and one strike. Of course, for Miami, they're waiting for the big shoe to drop, and that will be the health of Jose Fernandez, their brilliant young pitcher. Who went out with a sore elbow, checked swing on a pitch low, and they count two balls and one strike. He had the elbow examined here, and then he went back to Miami with the MRI, and it doesn't look good for Redmond and for Miami. Could very well be he's headed for Tommy John surgery. Line drive to left, Crawford racing to his right and picks it off. The Hetcheveria, a line drive to left field, two down. And here comes Giancarlo Stanton. Giancarlo Stanton with two out here in the first inning. And both balls have been hit hard. The ground ball by Yelich and that line drive by Echeveria. Giancarlo out of Sherman Oaks. Went to Notre Dame High School. 6'5", 245 thereabouts. And the right hand hitter takes a slow curveball in for a strike. And the count 0 and 1. Stanton hitting 381 with runners in scoring position. But like the rest of the team, not doing as well on the road as he does at home. He takes a pitch low. The Dodgers stack up the left side. Gordon has gone across the line up the middle. So all alone, Adrian Gonzalez between first and second. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, and that's a shot right where Gordon might have been, but it's a base hit to center. So Stanton, who had a single and a double last night in four at-bats, comes up with a two-out single. That means he now has a 15-game hitting streak, and he has a 12-game hitting streak against the Dodgers. So he is quite a young player. And with two down, the batter will be Casey McGee. So Stanton on the bag. McGee checking in. McGee has done very well with runners in scoring position, but he has really fallen off on the road. At home, hitting 366, and on the road, 210. Right hand batter, veteran, played briefly one year in Japan. Beckett out of a stretch, comes to his hitter and misses high and inside with a fastball. Ball one. The years have certainly gone rolling by. The Marlins made their debut in 1993. Joe DiMaggio threw out the ceremonial first pitch. And former Dodger Charlie Huff beat his old club. Opening day in Miami. The 1 0 pitch swung on and missed. The losing pitcher in that game, Oral Hershiser. In those days, they played at Joe Robbie Stadium. It was a football stadium. They played an exhibition game near the end of the 1992 season before they actually started, and they were shocked. They found out no bullpen. Yeah, there was no bullpen in the football stadium. Here's the 1-1 pitch on the way to Casey McGee. Fastball swung on, fouled at the plate, and the count one and two. So from the 1993 season, where they struggled and began. Now suddenly here they are two games out of first place. 
behind Atlanta but suffering a horrific blow to lose Jose Fernandez. One and two the count Stanton off the bag held on by Gonzalez throw over there. Stanton diving back. He's a perfect three and oh in stolen bases. Stanton inching off the bag two down first inning we're just starting no score. Beckett a high set delivers fastball hit near to right field Puig has to go back reaches up and makes a catch as he falls down. That ball really took off on him and Yasiel able to at the last minute make the save before hitting the grass. So all the balls were hit hard. And Beckett walks off allowing just one hit but each one was hit right on the button and at the end of half an inning no score. came to the plate and every one hit the ball hard but Beckett got through it giving up just a base hit now we'll take a look at Don Mattingly's lineup as the Dodgers try to keep pace with the red hot giant ball club D Gordon leads off at second base Yasiel Puig with a 12 game hitting streak and tearing up four home runs 15 RBIs and a 400 batting average during the streak and it's his night then you have Hanley Ramirez at short, Adrian Gonzalez at first, Matt Kemp in center, Carl Crawford in left, Justin Turner at third, Drew Butera behind the plate, Josh Beckett on the mound. On the mound for Miami is young Jacob Turner out of St. Louis, Missouri, born in St. Charles, Missouri, grew up very much of a Cardinal fan. He's 22 years old. He'll be 23 the 21st of May. And the right hand is first pitch in for a strike. Turner is 6-5 and about 2-10. So D. Gordon trying to get the Dodgers started in the right direction. No balls in one strike. Turner turns, right-handed deals, comebacker right back to him. And he handles it, gets it to first base. And just like that, we have one out, bottom of the first inning. We can take a look at Miami defensively. The outfield, Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton. The infield, McGee, Echevarria, Dietrich, and Jones. And the battery of Turner and Salva Lamakia. Well, here he is. It's his night. Yasiel Puig, bobblehead night, a crowd of around 50,000. And, of course, that lovely beginning where his mom threw out the first pitch to him. And then together they stood behind home plate. And Yasiel, in his own inimitable way, Said it was time for Dodger baseball, and then he added, let's go. Well, he's been going, hitting 318, seven home runs. Turner delivers, fastball, foul back, and the count 0-1, a nice and easy 92 mile an hour. Yep, great bobblehead. And, of course, typical of Puig, his arms and hands extended high up over his head, which is a typical pose for him. 
the strike one pitch on the way and Yasiel takes in on the knuckles one ball and one strike it was Puig last night in the fourth inning the Dodgers down three to one he had a three run home run turned it around to give the Dodgers the four three lead and they held on to win it six five so Yasiel waiting one and one Turner comes back inside again the old story you don't want to let a power hitter fully extend his arm so Turner's trying to keep it in on him for Turner he went to Westminster Christian and he played with the sons of some pretty well-known major leaguers Andy Bennis Mike Matheny and Todd Worrell and of course they all had some tidbits how to become a major league player and here he is 2-1 2-1 pitch on the way is swung on, hit into right center. On his horse is Osuna to make the catch. So Yasiel drives one to the gap in right center. Marcel Osuna making a fine running catch. And we have two down in the first inning. And the battle will be Hanley Ramirez. So Yasiel in this streak, very much of a tough out. Osuna covers a lot of ground. In fact, Brett Butler of Miami, formerly a player with the Dodgers, and Brett compares Osuna a bit to Raul Mondesi, so he's another fine player. The Marlins have a lot of good young players. Puig sitting quietly near the bat rack. The consolation that at least he hit the ball hard. So two down, here's Ramirez. Hanley checking in, Turner ready and delivers, fastball in for a strike, and the count 0-1. Hanley last night, one for four, base hit to center, plus a walk. Hitting 257, however, so he's way off his feed. Five home runs, 17 runs batted in. Jacob Turner, both feet on the rubber, looks down to get a sign. Now the strike one pitch on the way is way inside. Almost got him. And a one ball, one strike count. When Turner was in high school, the pitching coach for the high school team was Todd Worrell. And they say that uh, Jacob Turner wanted to be a pitcher from the time he was nine years old. One and one to count. Jacob 0 and 9 on the road. Coming over from the Tigers. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Fastball inside. 2-1 to count. Annabelle Sanchez and Omar Infante went to Detroit. And Turner came over here. So Jacob at 6-5 looks down to get a sign. Feet together. Right on the rubber. Somewhat like an Oral Hershiser. And Hanley Ramirez tired of waiting. He backs out. The Tigers had to be in love with him as he stands at attention. Now Jacob Reddy in the 2-1 pitch. Fastball foul back. The Tigers gave him a $4.7 million bonus. Payable over six years. A guaranteed value of about five and a half. And yet they traded him away to get Anabel Sanchez. Jacob looks in, gets a sign, turns on the rubber and the 2-2 pitch on the way inside again. So the pattern is pretty similar. Trying to crowd Puig, got away with it, trying to crowd Hanley, and he's gone three and two. So Puig now cooling off after that robbery by Osuna. Fine running catch of the ball he hit. And the 3-2 pitch coming up to Hanley Ramirez. Swung on and fouled away. A very light breeze, barely stirring the flag, the state flag. 88 degrees at the start of the game. Jacob Turner in his career on the road, 0-9. That's 16 starts on the road. Not bad ERA, 3.8. And the 3-2 pitch is swung on and foul back. So Hanley, if nothing else, making him pitch a little bit. And after 13 pitches, he has two out in the first inning. Dodgers trailing the Giants by four and a half games. The Marlins hanging tough. They're trailing Atlanta by two. 
Well, Turner looks down the barrel. Couple of very hungry pitchers in this game tonight. 3 2 pitch is swung on and missed, and that'll do it for Ramirez. So the Dodgers go down 1 2 3, and at the end of an inning, Miami nothing and the Dodgers nothing. And no score in the ball game. Hello to you on Yasiel Puig bobblehead night. Crowd of over 50,000, I would think, here in the stadium. Puig opened up, hit the ball well, but lined out to Osuna in deep right center field. Jared Saldalamakia coming up. Left-hand hitting catcher and takes low ball one. One and oh. Saldalamakia switch hits, but checking in left-handed. Batting 263 from this side. And pulls one foul outside of first. So his overall batting average about 263. So Sal who's been in a slump. 0 for 15 on the road trip. And it's even worse than that. So Salty as they call him. Waiting. Beckett ready in the 1-1 pitch. A change up. And Sal Lamacchia way out in front of it. That pitch hurried up there at 71 miles an hour, and the bottom dropped out of it. So one and two, they count. Beckett turns, ready. Josh comes back, breaking ball off the corner, and they count two and two. If you turn the clock back, and of course Beckett in so many ways would love to do that, you would certainly stop in the year 2007. Slow curveball swung on and missed. And down goes Saul Lamakia. In 2007, Josh Beckett was pitching for the Boston Red Sox, a team for whom Saul Lamakia worked. And among other things, in 2007, the year that he won 20, he won five games in the month of April. Only three Red Sox pitchers have ever won that many games in the month of April. Start with Beckett. Meanwhile, his first pitch to Garrett Jones drops in, and they count 0-1. It should be one ball and no strikes. I think the scoreboard has it wrong. Anyway, who are the other two pitchers? How about having your name linked with Babe Ruth and the other Pedro Martinez? The pitch kind of fooling Drew Butera. The next pitch of the plate is a ground ball wide at first. Gonzalez will take it to the bag, waving Beckett away. So we have two down here in the second inning, and Marcel Osuna coming up. Osuna made that fine running catch as Saul Lamacchia goes back to the dugout, and the struggle continues. Had one hit in the game, and that was Giancarlo 
Stanton single to center in the first inning to extend two streaks. He has a 15-game hitting streak against the league and a 12-game hitting streak against the Dodgers. So here's Osuna, right-hand batter, has a look and bends away from a pitch inside, ball one. One and oh, the count to Marcel. Beckett ready, comes back 1-0, off speed, drops it in nicely for a strike. One ball and one strike. Of course, Beckett said that, among other things, A.J. Ellis made him convinced he could throw that curveball, and it's been working. There's another breaking ball fouled off. So one and two to Marcel Osuna. Osuna, just 23 years old. He's from the Dominican. He's a cousin, you may remember, of a former big leaguer, a utility man, Pablo Osuna. And the one-two pitch on the way. Pull foul down the left field line. Beckett throwing a lot of off-speed pitches in the 70s. One and two the count. Talking about having his name linked with Babe Ruth and Pedro Martinez. There was another note about Josh Beckett. He won three postseason games before he was 28. The one-two pitch is a check swing, strike three, and that's it. Whose name is linked there with three postgame shutouts? Christy Mathewson and Josh Beckett. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score. the first 40,000 fans in attendance take home a Dodger team theme t-shirt presented by Security Benefit. For tickets visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Bottom of the second inning, Adrian Gonzalez checking in at the plate followed by Matt Kemp and then Carl Crawford. Jacob Turner set the Dodgers down in the first inning. One, two, three, striking out one. And Gonzalez hitting 262 at the plate. Nine home runs, 27 runs batted in, and takes a strike. Gonzalez last night had one hit in four at bats plus a walk. On deck, Matt Kemp. Turner turns, and the strike one pitch is swung on and foul back, and the count 0 and 2. Laz Diaz took a little lick in the first inning. It was one of those pitches that fooled Drew Butera. And the plate umpire is then victimized that the catcher can't handle it. And it nailed Laz. So at the end of the inning, Josh Becker went over to talk to him about it. I think he was apologizing that Laz would get hit. 
For those watching on television, it sailed right over the glove of Butera and hit Laz Diaz right in the mask. And then Beckett comes down to talk to the veteran umpire who has a big grin on his face. The one-two pitch on the way. Ground ball to first. Up with it easily is Garrett Jones. Flips to Turner. And like that, we have one away. By the way, in talking about Laz Diaz, the plate umpire, last night we were talking about it was the 10th anniversary of that unbelievable at-bat involving Alex Cora. An 18-pitch at-bat. Alex fouled off 14 pitches and then hit a two-run home run. Well, Laz Diaz was the plate umpire the night of Cora's historic at-bat. So one away, and here's Matt Kemp. Laz has been in the big leagues over 15 years. He's born in Miami, Florida. Matt hitting 269, five home runs, 11 runs batted in. Kemp last night, they walked him a couple of times. He had a base hit, two stolen bases, scored twice. And he's been making some rather remarkable defensive plays in center field. No balls and one strike to count. Turner ready in the right-handed delivers and that's smoked to center for a base hit. A one hopper into the glove of Osuna. So Matt, who is certainly on the upswing, a line drive single to center and that will bring up Carl Crawford. Hit number one for the Dodgers. Kemp going down to get it and lines it to center. So Turner now will be pitching out of the stretch for the first time and Carl Crawford will be the batter. Crawford hitting 255. One home run, nine runs batted in. Out of his stretch is Turner. Kemp cautious lead at first. Right-handed delivers and the pitch down and away. One ball and no strikes to Carl Crawford. Crawford checking now with Lorenzo Bundy. He had a seven-game hitting streak, but it snapped Sunday. During that streak, he was hitting 500 with a home run and three RBIs. The 1-0 pitch on the way to Carl swung on, fouled at the plate, and the count, one ball and one strike. Crawford, two for eight in the homestand, hitting 284 against right-handers, but only 111. So the Dodgers have Crawford hitting 111 against left-handers. What do you think Andre Ethier is hitting against left-handers? You're right, 111. One ball, one strike, throw to first. Kemp leaning and gets back on his hands and knees. No score, bottom of the second inning. Fifth meeting of the year as Ethier now is the spectator as Crawford was last night. One ball and one strike to count. Crawford waiting. Turner looks over to see what Kemp is doing. Right hand that turns, throws over, and Matt goes back standing up. Waiting on deck, hitting behind Crawford is Justin Turner. So Jacob Turner will be facing Justin Turner in a little while. One and one the count. Jacob will be 23 on the 21st of May. The 1-1 pitch on the way. Turner's set, comes to his hitter, high and away. Two balls and one strike to count. Turner basically, he has a two-seamer and the four-seam fastball. That heavy sinker, the two-seamer, he's been clocked as throwing up to 96. He has a curveball and a good changeup. Right hand already in the 2 1 pitch, and that's inside and up for ball three. Three and one the count. Turner a couple of years ago had right forearm stiffness. Then in 2011, he had minor elbow and shoulder stiffness. 2012, they shut him down. He couldn't pick up a baseball for over a week. He had tendonitis in his right shoulder. 3 1 pitch, Kemp holds, and there's a line drive right into Turner's glove. He throws to first, and there's the double play. So Crawford can't hit it much harder than that. It found the glove. Turner just turned and lobbed to first. So no runs ahead, nobody left, and at the end of two, no score.
score in the ball game. The Marlins and the Dodgers, one hit on each side. And then you had Crawford hitting a bullet that found Turner's glove and turned into a double play. Derek Dietrich, the second baseman, will start it off. He's a left hand batter, then Turner and Yelich. And Beckett wrote it to go to work. Derek Dietrich from Parma, Ohio, lives in Cleveland. And the first pitch to him, very high, ball one. Baseball certainly in his blood. His maternal grandfather, Steve Demeter, who played in the big leagues. He was a third baseman. He was also a minor league manager and a scout. Derek fouls it off in the count one and one. His grandfather managed the Erie Sea Wolves, and he was taking batting practice when he was six or seven years old and working out at second base. So he's just destined to be here. One one pitch slow curveball but he misses ball two two and one the count. Josh Beckett. Trying to pick up a victory he's getting sick and tired of coming up short. The two one pitch on the way swung on grounded foul outside of first two and two the count. The last time Beckett won a ball game way back in 2012 against Colorado. He's gone to the mound 14 times and come away empty handed. Still looking for that win. 0 and 1 this year. Six times he's gone to the mound and a good ERA 2.8. And the pitch is lifted into shallow left center. A trio of Dodgers. It's Matt Kemp right there to one handed. The Dietrich a fly ball one down and the battle will be pitcher, Jacob Turner. Three. Jacob Turner. So Dietrich heads back to the dugout. Turner coming up, and Christian Yelich out on deck. No runs, one hit for each side. Turner one for five, and the first pitch to him is down and away. Ball one, one and zero. Oh. The Marlins, a wonderful team at home. And a really poor struggling team on the road. If somebody had the answer for that, you'd make a lot of money. When the Marlins are home, they are 17 and 5. That is the best record for any ball club in the major leagues at home. How in the world can you explain on the road 3 and 14? The 2 0 pitch way off the plate. So Beckett now behind 3 and 0 to his opposite number. I mean the Marlins have a very good offense. They can score runs. They can do it late. They do well with runners in scoring position with hitters like Stanton and Yelich. Pitch in for a strike. Three and one they count. They score with two out. They get walks. They drive in runners but almost always at home. Yelich waiting on deck. The next pitch is strike. That runs at three and two. They do so many things they bunt well and they don't hit into double plays. So you put all that together as Osuna and club watch three two pitches inside. So Turner draws the walk and the pitcher goes to first. So Beckett is allowed to hit now a walk. Of course for the Dodgers they saw enough walks last night. Miami pitchers walked 10 Dodgers last night. Dodgers had 10 hits and still managed to score only six runs. Yelich grounded hard in the first inning. Last night he had about a hundred and fifty people here family and friends. He hit the first pitch for a single and hit a three and two pitch for a home run and for good measure he also stole a base last night. Yelich left hand batter and waiting. And the first pitch in for a strike, 0 oh and 1. Yelich last night ran the count to 3 and 2, got a breaking ball down, and strong enough to hit it into the pavilion. Pretty good shot for a left hand batter, 6 4 and about 195. Christian waits. And the strike one pitch coming up. Beckett delivers, and it's just off the plate. One ball, one strike. Yelich committed. To a baseball scholarship at the University of Miami, having graduated from Westlake High School in Thousand Oaks. A couple of players who went to Westlake High, Matt Franco, and certainly you remember catcher Mike Lieberthal, who played for the Dodgers.
the one one pitch inside ball two two and one. Two years ago they said Christian Yelich was the number one prospect in the entire farm system and he's here. He'll be 23 in December and he's already been playing since 2010. Two and one the count to Christian. Beckett out of a stretch. Very deliberate now to the plate and that's high. So after walking Turner he now comes back and falls three and one to Christian Yelich. Josh Beckett with a record of 0 and 1 after six starts ready to go 3 and 1. Josh a high set around the collarbone and the 3 1 pitch fouled away 3 and 2 the count. So Beckett has now made 41 pitches all told. Josh out of his stretch again. Turner short lead at first. And the 3 2 pitch. Turner not going. And it's a foul ball down the left field line, dropping back into the stands out of play. One out, top of the third. No score. Beautiful summer's evening. 88 degrees when the game started. Light breeze blowing from left to right. And a crowd of around 50,000. Boy, Yasiel Puig bobblehead. And we had 51,000 on Mother's Day Sunday. Three and two. The Marlins at home are averaging 21,000 a game. So this is a big crowd for them. Here's the 3 2 pitch coming up. Swung on and missed. So Yelich going after a pitch up and down he goes. So Beckett takes care of young Yelich with a pitch that might have been out of the strike zone. And we have two out and the batter, Adani Echevarria. The shortstop hit the ball hard, lined out to Carl Crawford in the first inning. So Echevarria ready to check in. May 5 going back to last year in Philadelphia. Hecha Javier certainly had himself a memorable game. He takes a slow curveball for a strike. He set a National League record for RBIs by a Cuban player. Boy, there's a target for Puig to shoot at. Seven runs batted in. He tripled in three runs in the first inning and hit a grand slam in the third. Strike one pitch, a little roller to Adrian, and that'll be that. No runs, no hits. He walked the pitcher, and a man left. And at the end of two and a half innings, no score.
No score in the ball game. It's Beckett and Jacob Turner going for Miami in place of Jose Fernandez. And I wanted especially to point out the hard work that Jose Fernandez does and did in order to get to the big leagues because I figured a lot of youngsters listening to the ball game. And if I can duck it in in between pitches, it will blow your mind, as they say, to realize how hard Jose Fernandez worked to get to the big leagues. Here's Justin Turner. Then it'll be Butera and Beckett. Third inning, no score. So Jacob Turner ready to work to Justin Turner hitting 200. Mr. Turner meet Mr. Turner. And here we go. Jacob deals fastball at the knees on the corner for a strike and the count 0 and 1. Jose Fernandez trainer is a man named Robert Garcia. And his training regimen is unbelievable. Turner hits a fly ball to right field at the other end of it is Stanton to make the catch. And we have one down in the third inning. And the batter will be Drew Butera. Dodger catcher number 31. Drew Butera. The first thing that Jose Fernandez would do. Trust me on this. He have his right arm raised in a high cock position. Swinging it forward. Standing in front of a mirror. Doing it every day. Are you ready? 10,000 times. That's what Garcia insisted Fernandez do and he did. The first pitch coming up to Butera ground ball to third on it is McGee. AC throws him out quickly two down here in the third inning. How about pushing a car. How about pushing an SUV. Well Garcia had Fernandez pushing uh, pushing the SUV around the track. That circle the football field. I mean that sounds funny. That sounds ridiculous. But apparently Garcia felt that with Fernandez pushing the SUV it would strengthen his back especially the lower back. Becca takes a strike. He would have him long toss in the bullpen. And there's a ground ball up the middle backhanded nicely by Dietrich but he throws it away into the Marlin dugout. So it'll probably be one and one base hit and an error. As Beckett rolls one up the middle and will wind up at second base. So one and one base hit error charge to Dietrich. And D Gordon coming up now trying to pick up Beckett. The throw wasn't in the neighborhood. It was barely in the area code. But it was a great effort by Dietrich to even get to the ball. So Beckett at second with two down. And here is D. Gordon. Another thing Fernandez did. He would spend at least 90 minutes stretching. The pitch to Gordon off speed and away ball one one and oh. Yeah 90 minutes just stretching. To strengthen his lower body. That's when he would push his mom's SUV. It's a 5000 pound SUV on a track in a parking lot. And then there was the axe. Here's the one oh pitch in for a strike. He would swing an axe chopping wood at least 400 times a day. I, I bring this up because Jose Fernandez without a doubt may be the hardest working major league player alive. And then he comes up with a bad elbow. The one one pitch in for a strike one and two. Sometimes Fernandez would run with a snorkel mask over his face. That would be to improve his breathing capacity and help him perform when the air is thinner like in Colorado. One ball and two strikes. Gordon rolls one to the right side to Dietrich. Derek makes the play this time so no runs one hit an error and one left and at the end of three no score.
Miami and the Dodgers. Just to conclude, we'll talk about Jose Fernandez in a little while. But in the fourth inning, Stanton, McGee, and Salda Lamacchia will be coming up against Josh Beckett. Giancarlo Stanton single in the first inning. His dad is here, Mike Stanton. In fact, when Giancarlo first came up, he was called Mike Stanton, and then he opted, no, I want my full name. So Mike is now the second name. It's Giancarlo Cruz, then Mike, and then Stanton. And he should be very proud of his son. What a fine young man and a heck of a ball player. Just to get back to Fernandez, ironic note that he would hurt his elbow after all the unbelievable things he had to do to get in shape. Beckett, meanwhile, ready? Here we go. Strike. If Jose Fernandez goes under surgery, he will join the Mets phenom Matt Harvey on Tommy John surgery. Little roll of the third, no real play for Justin, but he makes it anyway and it's too late. So Stanton a dribble single to third and he's two for T and he has four hits now in two games. Third base, number nine, Casey McGee. Just topping the ball Justin Turner so deep wouldn't quit decided he would try anyway. Stanton running well and beats it easily and that'll bring up Casey McGee. Stanton kind of laughing over getting a dribble single with all of his power. Stanton is three for three in stolen bases. One last note and we'll drop it. Fernandez, if he does undergo surgery, he and Matt Harvey will have the surgery each after exactly 36 career big league starts. It's such a tragedy. However, then again, Dave Van Horn, the fine broadcaster for Miami, who used to broadcast with Montreal, he was here the night that Tommy John made the pitch and then walked off the mound right into the Dodger dugout. He was done, everybody thought. Tore his arm. And you know the Tommy John story. 0 and 1 to count to Casey McGee. Beckett very slow, very deliberate. And there goes Stanton, a pitch very high, and it was over the head of McGee, though that meant Butera never had a chance to throw the ball because McGee, just trying to get out of the way of it, ducked and was standing right in front of him. So it's a stolen base for Stanton. He's now four for four. Butera taken out of the play, not any obstruction or anything like that. So one and one the count. Stanton at second. One ball, one strike. Ball two. Two and one. Two balls and one strike. Josh 0 and 1 against his old club, 0 and 2 lifetime. Fastball, two and two. So Casey McGee, who's very, very adept at hitting with runners in scoring position, we told you earlier, he was hitting 405 coming into the game. Well, he's got Stanton at second, nobody out. No score, fourth inning. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball hit to the right side, so that gets Stanton over. 4-3 if you're scoring, one out, and the batter will be Salty. Jared Salta Lamakia. So that's a good at bat for McGee to move his man along. Salta Lamakia struggling 0 for 1. Last night he went 0 for 4. I think now to extend his streak, he is 3 for 29. Switch hitter batting left handed, and the Dodgers load up the right side. 
Ball one. So Justin Turner all alone on the left side. On deck, another left hand hitter, Garrett Jones. Saw the Lamaki a switch hitter. Slow curveball. Foul back. One and one. That thing 70 miles an hour. No runs, two hits for each side. Saw the Lamakia again pointing out a problem. 0 for his last 19, trying to get Stanton home from third. Off speed pitch at 70 and a two and one count. And another puzzle. Here's Saul the Lamaki is struggling and struggling. You know what he's hitting at home? 348. Fastball and he's late after all that slow stuff. Two and two the count. So one out, two and two to Saul the Lamakia, who certainly does reflect the frustration and the success of his ball club. 348 at home and less than 130 on the road. Two and two. Foul ball. Still two balls and two strikes. Jared Sola Lamacchia, one time played for the Red Sox. Beckett consuming a lot of time and no rush. As a starting pitcher today, you go every fifth day, so it's a long time to wait. And when you get out there, you're not in any hurry. Two and two. Off speed, ball three. Boy, he's in the 70s. The majority of pitches so far were in the fourth inning. Runner a third, one out. Rick Honeycutt watching him carefully. Fastballs few and far between. So let's see what he gets now. Fastball and grounded foul. So saw the Lamacchio, as the players say, sitting on the fastball, pulled it too much. Marlins are trying to snap a four game losing streak. They were in San Diego. They won the first game and then Mike Redmond's club went down the drain losing three came up here last night to lose. Three and two the count. Stanton at third one out. No score. And down goes Sola Lamacchia. Huge out. Two down. His struggles continue. And Garrett Jones coming up. The so Beckett gave him one fastball and came back with a little sinker. And down goes Salty. So he struck out twice. Four strikeouts for Beckett. Not to rub it in, rubbing salt in the wounds of Salty, but he's now three for his last 30 at bats. Wow. Garrett Jones takes ball one. By the way, if Jones should walk, Beckett is really just pitching around him, even though Marcel Osuna is on deck. Jones, five for six, coming in. Certainly a place to put him. One ball and no strikes. Slow curve ball, that drops low. Two and oh, the count. Beckett is remembered in Florida. He was a high bonus boy when they first signed him. 2 0 pitch to Garrett. That's a high strike. 2 and 1. In 2000, Beckett donated $100,000 for the Marlins to start a baseball tournament in Miami for 500 kids ages 12 and younger. Josh made the 
contribution as a gesture of appreciation for all the good things they had done for him. 2 1 pitch in the dirt. 3 and 1 the count to Garrett Jones, Marcel Osuna on deck, and of course Butera with a runner at third, doing everything possible to make sure a pitch doesn't get away. So Stanton just walking down the line off the bag. Jones waiting. Right side of the infield very deep Gordon on the grass. 3 1 pitch inside ball four. I don't think he wanted much of him. We find out. That Jones five for six against him Beckett would say oh sure I knew that. So he walks him. Marcel Ozuna. Marcel Ozuna will be coming up. Marcel. A good arm the center fielder 6 2 about 190 and another youngster. He's only 23. He'll be 24 in November from the Dominican Republic. Brett Butler likens him a little bit to Raul Mondesi which means he's a good player. So first and third and two out Beckett might have to worry about Garrett Jones as he works on Marcel. And the first pitch Osuna takes a strike. Garrett Jones does not have a stolen base nor do the Marlins run. Collectively they have a total of only 10 stolen bases. And Christian Yelich has half of them. No balls one strike. Slow breaking ball foul back. Everything most of the time anyway in the 70s. And Beckett has now made 67 pitches. No balls, two strikes. No score, fourth inning, Stanton at third with a squib single, a stolen base, and advance on a ground ball. Beckett trying to get out of the inning against Osuna, and now Butera out to talk to him. Derek Dietrich is on deck. Marcel Osuna, another fellow with a severe fall off, at home hitting 308. On the road, 203. The strike two pitch, check swing, strike three, and Beckett has gotten out of the jam as he finally unleashes a 91 mile an hour fastball. No runs, an infield single, and a man left. And then the walk made two men on. That pitch out of the strike zone. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. No score. On Yasiel Puig bobblehead night. Yasiel lined out to right center in the first inning. 
interesting about him and the first pitch his batting average if he goes after the first pitch is 526 he's first in the big league his slugging percentage is over one and as you can see he is second in home runs with a dozen who's first Miguel Cabrera of the Detroit Tigers so with that in mind we will be first up here in the bottom of the fourth. Yasiel in and out of the box. Lovely moment to see his mom underhand the first pitch to her son. And then they stood together as he said it's time for Dodger baseball in his uh, somewhat inimitable way. Slider down and away ball one. Puig knows Jacob Turner. He met him in Miami and said hello to him. Crushed one. Hit it out of sight, and I mean out of sight, up above the green wall. It was about 450 or thereabouts. Fastball grounded up the middle by the diving Dietrich. So Yasiel Puig extends his hitting streak with a ground ball single. He was robbed his first at bat on a fine running catch by Marcel Osuna. So Puig is now hit safely in 13 straight. Take another look. Hit it hard up the middle. Decides to go into high and then shifts back. So Yasiel now has a 13 game hitting streak. And the batter Hanley Ramirez. Hanley struggling has been for quite a while hitting 255. Ground ball hard nice pick by McGee to second for one the first double play. So Ramirez hits it hard but bangs into the double play. Good play by Casey McGee. Do you remember the radio show Fibber McGee and Molly. It was an old show but the key line of the show was taint funny McGee and I can imagine if he could speak to him Ramirez would say the same thing taint funny indeed the Casey makes a good play Dodgers hit into a double play and the batter now is Adrian Gonzalez Gonzalez grounded out 0 for 1 hitting 260. Dodgers have hit into two double plays. Remember Crawford hit that line drive that found Turner's glove. And he was able to throw to first to double up Kemp. Now Ramirez hits the ball hard into a double play. As Crawford looks on. 0 and 1 to Adrian Gonzalez. No score. And stroke to the right. Nice pick. Dietrich this time has time to settle his feet make the throw and that's that. So no runs one hit nobody left and at the end of four no score.
one live streaming sports service is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Dodgers.com for details. In the fifth inning, it will be Derek Dietrich, the second baseman. Then the pitcher, Jacob Turner, followed by Christian Yelich. Dietrich making a good play to get to the ball, then tried to make that off-balance throw and threw it away for an error. But it was a great effort. With the bat, he flied to center in the third inning. Ground ball up the middle and a base hit. So for Beckett he's pitching out of the stretch a bit. In fact he's retired the side in order only in the second inning. When he struck out two of three. So a lead off single. And the batter now Turner. One thing that Miami has done very well. And it's a vital part of the game. They bunt exceptionally well. They have the highest number of sacrifices and it's a good 62 percent above the average. They have 21 sacrifice bunts. And Turner does a great job drops a beauty. So they can do a lot of things this young Miami ball club. That's why they're in second place two games behind Atlanta. And Turner does his job moves his man along. So now Yelich. Echevarria and Stanton coming up in that order with a runner in scoring position. Yelich grounded hard to Adrian Gonzalez and struck out a pitch that was out of the strike zone. Beckett a look back at Dietrich. Very deliberate. Big slow breaking ball for a strike. Up north the Braves got a run at the end of four Braves won Giants nothing. Evan Gaddis tripled in Freddie Freeman. Oh and one. Time at the plate. You know we were talking about the fact we're so bitterly disappointed not to be able to see Jose Fernandez pitch and we're so bitterly disappointed for him to perhaps have to have Tommy John surgery after working so hard in the dirt nice save by Butera out at second base Derek Dietrich he had his first major league home run here. An anniversary just about it was May the 10th of last year a three run home run against Matt McGill and the winning pitcher that night was Jose Fernandez. One ball and one strike the count one out fifth inning no score Christian Yelich trying to pick him up. One and two boy Beckett throwing so many off speed breaking balls. So far getting away with it occasionally trying to sneak in a fastball. One and two the count. And another breaking ball in the dirt. Two and two the count. So Dietrich a single. Turner does his job gets the sacrifice down. Now Yelich trying to pick him up. No score Dietrich carrying the mail out there at second base two and two the count. Breaking ball slow roller Gonzalez to the bag for the second out on the play Dietrich moves to third and in a moment Echevarria coming up. Betting next shortstop number three Adini Echevarria. 
Uh, Danny Echeverria line to left, grounded to first, 0 for 2. Seeing uh, Derek Dietrich get the base hit, young second baseman with a base hit against Josh Beckett, and you think about a, a Hall of Fame second baseman like Craig Biggio. Biggio had over 3,000 hits in his career. And yet went 0 for 17 against Beckett. Never could get a base hit against him. So Dietrich's ahead of Biggio. Echevarria chasing a pitch. Looked like it was out of the zone. 0 and 1 the count. Adeni Echevarria. Ground ball to third. Turner is on it. Over to first. So Beckett leaves yet another. The second time the Marlins left a man at third. And at the end of four and a half innings, no score. No score, bottom of the fifth inning. Miami and the Dodgers, quite a battle here. Josh Beckett and Jacob Turner, and a lot of hungry people here as well. No runs, three hits for each side. The Dodgers now will have Matt Kemp, Paul Crawford, and Justin Turner. The Dodgers, through four innings, have gotten one man to second base, and that was Beckett. The Marlins in their five innings have gotten two men as far as third. And with scoreless bottom of the fifth, Matt singled in the second inning. Ball one, one and oh. Jacob Turner, Josh Beckett. Paul Mahalam pitches tomorrow night. It looks like Miami will go to the minor leagues to bring up a pitcher for tomorrow evening. One ball and no strikes. One and one. Oh wow. Well now aren't you something. <laughs> mm. Thank heavens for little girls. Ball two two and one. Big crowd on hand, around 50,000, we would guess. Beautiful summer's evening. It was 88 degrees. There's not a breath. Who cares? It's a good ball game. Lovely night. Another strike. That evens things up. Two balls and two strikes. Matt's batting average on the rise. 
A lot of cold stuff selling, I'm sure, tonight. Kemp hitting 275, fouls it back. Tomorrow night, the last game of the homestand. Dodgers leave Thursday, open up the road trip in Arizona, and then go across country to New York and Philadelphia. Two balls, two strikes. A little roller foul. When the Dodgers come back off that road trip, they have three with Cincinnati, four with Pittsburgh, and three with the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox have a Pui. That is to say, in the American League, they're all talking about a young Cuban by the name of Jose Abreu. As usual, you find Yasiel Pui very close to Juan Uribe. Bad ball, Matt chases, down he goes. One out in the fifth. That would be the second strikeout for Jacob Turner. And with one down, Carl Crawford hit a bullet back of the box. Line drive right into Turner's mitt, and he just threw the first for a double play. And that took care of Kemp. Fastball, sky to left and deep. Back goes Yelich, backtracking to the track to make the catch. So a nice play for Christian Yelich to go deep and handle that one. And we have two down, and the batter will be Justin Turner. Justin Turner flied to right, so he's 0 for 1. Struggling to get back up over 200. Fastball low. One ball and no strikes. No runs. Three hits for each side. One error for the Marlins. Josh Beckett cooling off has made 77 pitches thus far. Turner fouls it away. And a one ball, one strike count. So Jacob Turner... One pitch away from 50. He's coming off a fourth inning where he made only five pitches. Got Puig to single, but then Ramirez a double play, and Gonzalez grounded out. And that's going to be hit into center field for a base hit. So Justin Turner, two out, single to center. And the batter will be Drew Butera, the fourth hit for the Dodgers. Butera grounded to third in the third inning. So Justin nails one to center, breaking ball. Two out, Turner at first, no score, fifth inning. Fastball missed. Everything is so one sided for Miami about how well they do at home, even in shutouts. At home, they are 5 and 0. Oh. On the road, 1 and 2. But 5 and 0 oh at home in shutouts. Fastball hit to the hole. Retreating is the shortstop Echeverria, and he makes the play. So no runs, one hit, man left at the end of five, no score.
Marshall became a Dodger. Well, back in Brooklyn in 1956 on this day, the most hated giant pitcher, Sal Magley, became a Dodger. Not only that, in September of 1956, Magley pitched a no-hitter against the Philadelphia Philly. And more than that, Magley won game one of the 1956 World Series against the Yankees, beating Whitey Ford. However, Magley is also the answer to a trivia question. Who was the Dodger pitcher when Don Larson pitched a perfect game? And the answer, Sal Magley. Let's go back to this one. Beckett ready to go to work and missing ball one. Stanton two for two tonight has four hits in the two games. Stanton has two streaks going. He has a 15 game streak against the league a 12 game streak against the Dodgers and Puig has a 13 game streak. So two of the streaky hitters and we have one out. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Third baseman number nine, Casey McGee. Casey McGee lined out to right and grounded out. Just a footnote on Sal Magley. When he came to the Dodgers, he was 39 years old and still turned out to be tremendous help. Here's McGee, 0 for 2. And a strike. And tries to sneak a fastball in there, and he's successful. Oh, and two. If you look at Josh Beckett and his run support things have certainly changed since 2012 his last year with the Red Sox pitch away down goes McGee two out in 2012 Beckett's run support almost four runs a game 3.7 then 2013 the Dodgers got him 2.9 about three runs a game. But this year, his run support is not much support. 1.7 per game, and they're shut out tonight. Big slow curveball for a strike. Salta La Macchia has struck out twice, three for 30. Big slow curveball. Boy, you get into a slump like that, it would affect every part, not only of the game, but of your life. Guaranteed 3 for 30, 0 oh for forever, it seems. No way to get away from it. 0 oh and 2. One and two. Saul of Lamakia was with the Red Sox from 2010 through 13. So they were teammates, Beckett and Salty. Breaking ball hit up the middle. That'll be that. So Justin Turner playing on the other side of second base handles it. At the end of five and a half innings, no score.
Puig bobblehead night. Well, don't miss Hunjin Ryu's bobblehead night at Dodger Stadium. Tuesday, May 27, 710, the Dodgers and the Reds. And the first 50,000 fans in attendance will take home a mini Ryu compliments of Visit Korea with Asiana Airlines. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. Well, we hope that will certainly be as successful as tonight's. Meanwhile, bottom of the sixth, no score. Each pitcher has gotten eight ground balls. And we'll see now about Beckett, who singled up the middle in the third inning. Then Gordon, and then Puig. Beckett, first ball swinging, fly ball to center. Osuna has to go back to get it, but he does. So one pitch, one away. And the batter will be D. Gordon. I'll tell you one thing about Jacob Turner. He is really pitching a gem. Oh, sure, he's allowed four hits. He is not allowed a runner to get the third. And he's made 53 pitches with one out in the sixth inning. D. Gordon hit back to the box, grounded to second. The corners are up in the event of a bunt. And a strike. Osuna way over in a shallow left center. Yelich very shallow in left. So Stanton has a lot of room to roam out there in right field. And he's way over in right center. Strike. Turner has struck out a couple. The important thing, he has not walked anybody. And that's going to go down the left field line. Yelich over to take a look, but that's all. 0 and 2. Dodgers have had one man get to second base, and that was Josh Beckett in the third inning. Fastball, sliced foul, good fastball at 93. Boy, I'll bet you Todd Worrell, who was Jacob Turner's pitching coach in high school, has to be so proud of this young right-hander. 22 years old, it'd be 23 next week. Fastball hit to the hole, base hit. Now watch out here. Stanton had to go and get it. Yep, there goes Gordon, and he is in there with the double. So with the outfield so deployed, Stanton had a long way to go. The big thing, they didn't expect Gordon to pull the ball, but pull it he did. Gordon's eighth double. Even though Stanton has a great arm, Gordon was still able to get in there ahead of the throw. That pitch was almost in the dirt as well. And D sees the chance, seizes it, and winds up with a double. So Gordon has eight doubles, three triples, and a home run. And the Dodgers now finally get a man to second base since Beckett got there in the third inning. And here's the man of the night, Yasiel Puig. Lined out to center, single to center. Puig is really pumped. His mom is here. And ball one. You know he'd like to hit one out of sight for her. She threw out the first pitch to Yasiel, underhanded. And then with his arm wrapped around his mother, Yasiel made the announcement it's time for Dodger baseball. With a little Cuban accent. One ball and no strikes. Fastball 2 and 0. Oh. There she is, Maritza Puig. Yasiel's mom. 
very quiet. You wouldn't realize she's rooting for her son. You can bet she's probably praying for him. Two balls and no strikes. It was interesting before the game. Yasiel was taking batting practice and the whole Marlin club out on the field in front of their dugout. They all stopped to watch him. Gordon taking a big lead and ball three. Well what do you do when you have the wild horse at the plate on a three and oh count. You let him rip. Mattingly talking to Adrian Gonzalez. And ball four. So the one out double, they pitch around Quig, and that will bring up Hanley Ramirez. I don't say it was an intentional walk, you can't figure that, but I don't believe he wanted any part of Quig. He has struck out Ramirez and also Hanley grounded into a double play. For Puig, last year through 35 games, he had seven walks. He has 18 now as he matures and has become not just a power hitter, not just a good hitter. Slowly but surely as he matures, he's becoming a patient hitter. So two on, one out. Bottom of the sixth, no score. And here's Hanley. Ball one. Hanley hitting 253, but he's been fighting it. Five home runs, 17 RBIs. Double play hit hard right at Casey McGee at third base. No score, bottom of the sixth inning. And now Turner, after walking Quig, has trouble finding the zone and hold everything. Here comes his pitching coach, Chuck Hernandez. Chuck Hernandez was a pitcher, he had his career cut short. He had about five years in the minor leagues with the Yankees and the White Sox and the career cut short. He broke his elbow while throwing a fastball in an instructional league game for the White Sox back in 1983. The Chuck will be 54 in the middle of November. A marvelous communicator. And he has delivered the message 2 and 0 the count on Hanley Ramirez. And a strike. Spotting that fastball very well. 2 and 1. Jacob has made 13 pitches so far here in the sixth inning. So you have Gordon at second, Puig at first. You have a couple of rabbits out there. And ball three waiting on deck, Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez 0 for 2 on ground balls. Three and one to Hanley. Crowd of around 50,000, we would guess. Turner worrying about perhaps the run is going three and one. Gordon with a leg double, Puig with the walk, and Tim Wallach talking to his skipper.
Three balls, one strike. Big moment for Jacob Turner at 22. And another strike. Now what do you do? We know what the Marlins do. They get a left-hander up, Dan Jennings. One out. Fellas who can run well and who love to run are on the bases. Hanley is grounded into a double play tonight. He is grounded into four this year. Runners do not go, and there's a line drive down the left field line in the corner. Gordon scores. Here comes the wild horse. Here comes the throw. He scores. And the Dodgers lead two to nothing on a double from Hanley Ramirez. So Hanley Ramirez, who had hit the ball so hard in the fourth inning, but it was a double play, hit it even harder, a fastball, and he hooked it down into the left field corner. There wasn't much Christian Yelich can do but go after it. Two runs scored as Puig was able to beat the relay coming from the shortstop. Yasiel never paused and then went into the slide. So the Dodgers are out in front two to nothing and the batter now Adrian Gonzalez takes ball one. It's been a while since we saw Hanley Ramirez do his trademark when he hit the double to drive in two. That's when he made the two circles with his fingers and held them up to his eyes. The old I see you look that he started when he first came here. Line drive base hit Stanton was over shifted. So Ramirez will score easily and Adrian into second base with a double and the Dodgers lead three to nothing. So with one out Gordon doubled to right Puig walked Ramirez doubled them both home with his double and then Gonzalez double home Ramirez. So the Dodgers have hung a three on the board and lead three nothing Stanton still having to run a long way to cut the ball off and he's going to actually go into a slide a body block to prevent the ball from going all the way to the bullpen gate. So three doubles in the inning and the Dodgers lead three to nothing and the batter will be Matt Kemp. Still only one out. That was Beckett who swung at the first pitch and flied to center. So a happy Hanley Ramirez rests in the dugout and Kemp ball one. When the Marlins come up in the seventh, Turner is due to bat fourth. So they've had the left hand of Jennings up in the pen. Foul ball, one and one. Matt hitting 273, one for two tonight, single to center and struck out. This is the fifth meeting between the two teams. Marlins won two out of three in Miami. Dodgers trying to make it two in a row against them tonight. And that's whacked to left field and down the line. Yelich backhands it. Here comes Gonzalez to score on the single by Kemp and the Dodgers lead four to nothing. So the Dodgers break through against Jacob Turner four runs on eight hits. Camp after a breaking ball that seemed to stay up and hang, and he whacked it into left field for his single. So Gonzalez able to score without a play. So that'll do it for Jacob Turner. Yasiel Puig leading the spirited Dodger Ball Club to break a scoreless tie. Chase Young Turner leading for nothing, and we'll be back.
started off watching Adrian Gonzalez. Remember, Adrian's at second base, and Matt Kemp gets a base hit. They don't even go after Gonzalez and score. How did Puig thinks that Gonzalez looked? This is the way he thinks Adrian Gonzalez, gasping for air, scored from second base. And then, of course, it winds up with a big hug. And then more fun, they're now playing Puig bobblehead. That's Uribe on the left, Gonzalez on the right. A whack on the head, a return towel thrown. Fun and games, as Roy Campanella said, you've got to have a lot of little boy in you to play this game. And there's a lot of little boy down there in the Dodger dugout. Meanwhile, Dan Jennings, who is not related to the general manager, the general manager's name for the Miami Marlins is Dan Jennings. And that's ball one to Carl Crawford. This Dan Jennings from Berkeley lives in Iowa. Went to the University of Nebraska. Played college baseball for the Cornhuskers. 4-0 Dodgers. And that's going to be looped into right field for a base hit. Stopping at second base is Crawford. The ball is bobbled. And he moves on over. So Matt Kemp advances to third on a bloop single to right. And for the Dodgers, the magic continues. Beckett made out. Then Gordon doubles. Puig walks. Ramirez doubles in two. Gonzalez doubles in Ramirez. Kemp singles. Goes all the way to third on the error charge to Stanton. And the Dodgers, for the moment at least, are having a field day. So for... Giancarlo Stanton, he's had four hits, but muttering to himself, he's been over in right center, and he's always had to run way over towards the line. A couple of times sliding to block the ball, and that time charging to come in, couldn't control it. And a strike now to Turner. Five hits and a walk consecutively here in the sixth. Four hits in a row. He had the double, the walk, then two doubles and two singles. And a fly ball to deep right. Stanton has to go back. It's over his head. He makes a great catch. Tagging up and coming in to score is Matt Kemp. And getting back to first base barely is Carl Crawford. Boy, that was a fine effort by Stanton to go deep to make the catch and then fire the ball back in, and he almost got Crawford. Meanwhile, for Turner, he's happy to get a run batted in, and the Dodgers lead 5-0. There's the fine catch by Stanton. Then he winds up and lets one fly. That ball had a chance to go off the wall. Stanton bounces off, turns, sees Crawford, almost got him. So five runs, nine hits on the Dodgers, five hits in the inning. And here's Butera, who is the ninth man to come up. All the runs charged to the starter, Jacob Turner. Juan Uribe is going to come out on deck and bat for Josh Beckett. Right. They were wondering just how long it would take before Uribe got back some way or another. Brandon League is up in the Dodger bullpen. So with two out, he might have a shot. That depends on Butera, who is 0 for 2. Beckett has gone six innings, allowed three hits and nothing else. Fastball fouled away. One and one. So Dan Jennings trying to get some outs in the inning. Butera trying to keep it open. And Uribe hoping for a chance. Of course, the University of Nebraska has produced people like Alex Gordon of the Royals, Jabba Chamberlain of the Yankees, Brian Dusing of the Twins, and now Dan Jennings. 
One and two. In the dirt. Blocked by Salty. Two balls, two strikes. Meanwhile, Hanley Ramirez making sure the grip on that number 13 bat is to his likings. Right down on the knob. That was a big double he had to drive in two here in the inning. And of course, Gordon was the first one to score. That was Sean Figgins coming over to congratulate Hanley. The Braves are putting in a bit to Ryan Vogel song and the Giants. Atlanta four, Giants nothing. Dodgers five, Marlins nothing. Dodgers trying to cut the lead to three and a half. Two balls, two strikes. And down goes Butera. Nine men come to the plate. Five of them come home. Big hits, especially the first one. That was Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez came up with two on and hit a bullet into the left field corner to drive in Gordon and Puig. Then Gonzalez came up. He doubled. Then Matt Kemp singled. And by the time the dust settled, the Dodgers lead five to nothing. Five nothing. What's ahead? Well, the final game of the series with the Marlins and the last game of the homestand. Dodgers then on Friday will open up three with the Diamondbacks in Arizona, then go on to New York to play the Mets, and they'll finish up with the Philadelphia Phillies before coming back to open up the next homestand against Cincinnati. That would be on the 26th of May. Garrett Jones with a strike 0 and 1 Brandon Lee picking up for Josh Beckett. In fact Beckett went back out to the mound and league stopped throwing. Infield swung way around at first. Remember Uribe was out there to hit for Josh and never had the chance. So in his first six starts the Dodgers got him a total of seven runs and tonight they hand him five in the sixth inning and a drive down the right field line hooking foul well back in the lower deck Garrett Jones nice easy swing Garrett's hit as many as 27 home runs when he was with Pittsburgh. And he whacks that one to the gap. Here goes Puig in pursuit. A diving try. No play. Up with it is Kemp into second base. Yasiel Puig, I think, is carried by emotion, especially tonight. I mean, his mom is here. It's the bobblehead night. Up at the plate, you know, every at bat he wanted to hit one out of state. And now he's trying so hard to make a desperate catch. Tried. No play and Kemp had to retrieve. Who's going to tell him to take it easy?
that close. Wow. And he came a long way. So it's a double for Jones, a somersault for Yashiel. He's okay. Ball one to Osuna. Down in the Dodger bullpen, it's Chris Perez who gets up. So Brandon League was throwing, but no longer. Osuna has struck out twice in the second and in the fourth. Beckett has struck out a half a dozen. Josh also getting close to the hundred pitch mark now. Here comes number 94. And that got away from Butera. Wow. That makes you think that the catcher was crossed up. Take another look at this pitch. Right there. Nope. Nope. Has to be a pass ball. Jones takes third. Now he's gone out to talk to Beckett. Three and oh the count to Osuna. Derek Dietrich is on deck. Dodgers just suddenly exploded. They were four for 18 against Jacob Turner. And then boom as so often happens four for four and he was gone. That's a strike. Three and one to Osuna. And another strike, three and two. Beckett has been pitching for a living since 2000. Was with the Marlins from 2001 through 2008, and he went over the Red Sox. High fly ball to right center, tagging up is Jones. It'll be Puig who wants to do everything, including showing off his arm. Oh, almost. Wow. Almost. Oh, does he want to do something great tonight? He is dying to do something great. What a throw. Air mailed it. And Jones just did score. So it's five to one in favor of the Dodgers. Now the batter is Dietrich who has flied to center single to center one for two. Reed Johnson who always seems to hurt the Dodgers is on deck. Johnson last night hit his sixth pinch hit home run. And that was against Brian Wilson. That made a 6 3 lead for the Dodgers, suddenly 6 5. So Reed on deck. Reed played briefly for the Dodgers in 2010. Now suddenly Beckett, right up at the 100 pitch mark. And he's behind 3 and 0 to Dietrich. And ball four. Though so we will see everybody kind of looking in the Dodger dugout to see about Mattingly whether Beckett will be coming out after 101 pitches. Don now heading for the mound and that will be all for Josh Beckett. Honeycutt checked. Apparently Perez said he's ready. So for Beckett looking for his first win in his last 14 starts will go out where he could win. Can't lose. He's leading 5-1 with a runner at first base. His responsibility and he gets an ovation from the crowd. And with that, we'll be right back.
In the third innings, made 101 pitches. He's charged with a run. That was the double by Jones, the pass ball, and that was a key. And as soon as fly ball to Puig got him in, barely. Then he walked Dietrich, and now he's listening to Dan Harron. So he's close to a win, but the Dodgers have to hold on to it for his sake. Chris Perez will pick it up, and he will face Reed Johnson. The veteran out of Riverside, California, who lives in Las Vegas. Reed originally drafted by the Blue Jays at a Cal State Fullerton. Hurt the Dodgers twice in Miami and then hurt him as a pinch hitter last night. And a strike. Reed's 5'10, about 185. He's not a big home run hitter by any means. He's high in the big leagues. He once hit 12 for the Blue Jays. Lines this one to Crawford. So every time he faces the Dodgers, he hits the ball hard. So Reed Johnson lines out. Dietrich holding. And the batter will be Christian Yelich. Yellich, the boy from Thousand Oaks in Westlake High School, grounded hard to first, struck out, rolled out to first, 0 for 3. Check swing, they're going to look. Swing, says Jerry Davis. 0 and 1. Yelich made his debut in July last year and went three for four. His first game in the big leagues. He joined Giancarlo Stanton and his manager, Mike Redmond, the only Marlins to collect three hits in their de debuts. One and one. Yelich, 22 years old, he'd be 23 in December. He looks younger than that. Ball two, two and one. Veteran Chris Perez trying to take care of Christian Yelich. Two down, seventh inning, Dodgers lead 5-1. And Beckett trying for his first win in two years. Good breaking ball. Two and two. Chris Perez, he's been pitching as a pro since 2008. Came up to the Cardinals that year. 
went to the University of Miami. Breaking ball pull down the line. Foul. So back to first base goes Dietrich. And Yelich coming back to try it again. Two balls and two strikes. Chris Perez knows all about hard work. His dad owned a construction company. Chris would work with him in the summers, digging ditches, hauling trash. Learned the hard way. Ball three. His father never wanted Chris to take over the construction work, so he gave him the dirtiest jobs digging foundations, picking up trash, moving sand. And it was hot. Foul ball. Still three and two. Chris is a big man, 6'4 and a good 230. Lives in Florida, Holmes Beach. He was born in Bradenton. So a strong Florida connection indeed as he goes up against Miami. Three and two. Runner goes. Ground ball up the middle. Gordon backhands, throws, gets him. Big play. D. Gordon makes a fine play to get Yellen. One run, one hit, one left. At the end is six and a half, five to one. Take another look as Gordon's play. Dodgers lead five to one as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. New pitcher for Miami. It will be A.J. Ramos and a new hitter for the Dodgers. It'll be Sean Figgins batting for Perez. So Sean switch hitter batting left handed. Appeared as a pinch hitter last night had a base hit to left field. And Ramos misses ball one. Sean hitting just 176 doesn't play much. Did start a game at third. With Uribe out. 
Uribe almost got into this game. And Figgins takes one in the back. The Sean hit by the pitch. A.J. Ramos out of Lubbock, Texas. And Figgins will go to first. The Sean hit by the pitch. And the batter now. D. Gordon. Second baseman number nine, D. Gordon. Well, Gordon, he started it. Leading off the bottom of the sixth inning, Gordon doubled to right. That ignited the fire. Puig walked. Ramirez doubled both in. Gonzalez doubled in Ramirez. Kemp singled in Gonzalez. And the Dodgers had five. There goes Figgins. The pitch, a strike. The throw, not nearly in time. Sean gets a drop on A.J. Ramos and steals second easily. So the La Macchia got it down there, but it was far too late. A.J. Ramos, the pitcher, in his junior year at Texas Tech, had Tommy John surgery. And then he returned for his senior year. He's 5'10", but he's a good 2'10". Gordon pulls it foul. Just foul. Go so back to second goes Figgins. 0 oh and 2 the count to D. It was 1 for 3. So it's been Turner, Jennings, and now Ramos. 0 oh and 2. Fast ball in on the hands. Down he goes. So one out here in the seventh inning. And the batter will be Yasiel Puig. Take another look at Gordon's at bat. Inside. Never had much of a chance of hitting that. Yasiel from the moment the doors were open here in the ballpark. You had the feeling he wanted to do something dazzling. He lined out to center. He singled to center. He walked. He scored a run. Diving at balls in right field. Making a superhuman throw almost from deep right field to make an easy run score from the Marlins very close. And all not just because it's his bobblehead, but his mom is here. And like any son, he'd like to show off and do something for Maritza, who is wearing the Dodger shirt. As she sits quietly talking to her friend. Oh, and one to Yasiel. One and one. In that wild sixth inning with the crowd pumped up, Hui showed great discipline, great patience, and walked. And you knew that's not what he wanted to do. He wanted to. Hit one to Sacramento. One and two. Big breaking ball. In September of 2012, Ramos made his major league debut. He struck out the side in the ninth inning. And he struck out. Ricky Weeks, Ryan Braun, and Aramis Ramirez. Great way to break in. Fouled away. Still one and two. One and two the count to Yaziel. 
two and two. When Ramos struck out the side, his young catcher, Brantley, was so excited, so pumped up about the inning, he fired the ball into the stands. The players were screaming, no, no, but the young catcher was so pumped up, he threw it away. Then they raced in, got a new ball, made the exchange, and Ramos had the ball that struck out the side in his big league debut. Fast ball hit into left center field. He's got himself an extra base hit. He's got himself a run batted in. And now at last he has pleased his mom as he doubled in a run. Ah, yeah. Everybody else going wild. Typical mom just sitting there quietly basking in her son's glory. So it is six to one Dodgers. Puig now is a walk, a single, and a double. Got a ball up and smoked it. And drives in Figgins. Yasiel Puig. Boy, he is really something. And when you think about it, he is just beginning. Mom gets a nudge from her friend. Everybody jumps up. Mom just sits there. Patient, quiet, not going to brag, not going to turn around and say, that's my boy. Wouldn't blame her. <laughs> Whoever she's with is having a great time. Foul back. So is this crowd. The paid attendance tonight. 50,349. 5 0, 3 4 9. The Dodgers are averaging 46,000 a game. And with 50,000, they now have 976,000. Coming into a million maybe by tomorrow night. In the dirt, nice save by Salty. One and two the count. In the Dodger bullpen now, Brandon League loosening up. Dodgers lead 6-1, 10 hits. Ramirez struck out, hit into a double play, and then had the big hit. That got the ball rolling when he doubled in two in the sixth inning. Check swing and a tapper to the box. The out goes to first over to third goes Puig. He who hesitates hits back to the box. So here comes Gonzalez. First base, number 23, Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez grounded to first, grounded to second, and doubled to right. Six to one Dodgers seventh inning. Echevarria, Stanton and McGee will be due up in the eighth inning for Miami. So Adrian trying to pick up Puig from third and he promptly lines it to left but coming up losing it in the lights and making a great play Christian Yelich. That ball really took off on him. That was a fine play. Anything but routine. You can see him flinch, but stayed with it. So the Dodgers get one, and at the end of seven, lead six to one.
Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the Ram 1500, Motor Trends 2014 Truck of the Year, and first ever back-to-back -back champion. We have arrived in the eighth inning in the city of the Angels and the Dodgers leading Miami 6-1 to one on a beautiful summer's night before a crowd of 50,349, many of whom came just to get a Yasiel Puig bobblehead doll. They've gotten quite an exciting game. All of the excitement really centered, however, in the sixth inning when with one out, the Dodgers suddenly went on an offensive tear and scored five. So Brandon League will be the third Dodger pitcher. Beckett went six and a third. Perez got two outs and now Brandon. Perez made ten pitches. And we'll see about League going after Hechevaria. It has lined out to left and grounded out twice. Strike. Oh and one. Adene Echevarria hitting 267. Echevarria batted eighth yesterday. Went 0 for 4. Ground ball to Turner who guns it over there. Boy, he's got a good arm. One down. So one away in the eighth inning and the batter now Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton singled his first two at bats last time up grounded out. So he's had three singles and a double in the two games. In batting practice last night he hit a home run out of the stadium. If you look to left field, you will see the big sign State Farm. That's uh, above the left field pavilion. Give you an idea how far he hit it. Ball two. You see the State Farm sign. He hit it to the left of the sign between that palm tree and the sign and out into the night. I realize it was only batting practice, but no matter what. That shows you what kind of strength he has. If he played here a lot, in other words, three games a year, that's not money, but if he played here a lot, I would think he has a terrific chance of hitting one out. Yeah. Stanton, he is a good one. Three and one. Stanton with all of his ability is only 24. He'll be 25 in November. Typical his first major league home run was a grand slam. He's going to make a lot of noise. He's had 34 home runs 37 home runs 24 home runs. Ground foul. He comes in with 11 home runs and the league leading 42 runs batted in. Went to Notre Dame high. And down he goes. The league takes care of him. Stanton winds up going two for four and the batter will be Casey McGee. Sinker. Missed it by plenty way out of the strike zone. Of course we're talking about Puig. Trying especially hard tonight. You can imagine Stanton and Yellish. Two local boys playing at Dodger Stadium. They're certainly trying as hard if not too hard. Chopper to short. Hanley looks at the ball. And that's a very easy inning for Brandon Lee. And we are heading to the bottom of the eighth with the Dodgers leading six to one.
Yasiel and Ma Maritza. Fan, it's time for Toya Baseball. Let's go! You betcha, it's time for Dodger Baseball. Let's go! As Yasiel Puig's been pumped up ever since his mom arrived. And he's been putting on a show, much to the delight of this crowd of over 50,000 people. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mom very quietly taking in the scene, even when Yasiel doubled in the seventh inning and the crowd all around him jumping up in the air. And meanwhile, fun and games in the dugout. Juan Uribe giving Puig a knock on the head going by. We does not figure to have another at bat. There's another one of his whipping boys, and that's Hunjin Ryu. They have a lot of fun together. So it's bottom of the eighth, six to one in favor of the Dodgers. Winners tell jokes, losers say deal. And Steve Sishek coming in. Sishek is from Falmouth, Massachusetts, but lives in Jupiter, Florida. He went to Carson Newman University. That's in Tennessee. And a strike to Matt Kemp. Another pitcher familiar in the Southlands who came from Carson Newman. Clyde Wright. Clyde pitched for the Angels. 0-1. One. one ball and one strike. Zizek, 6'6", 220. He'll be 28, middle of June. That's another strike, one and two. Drops that arm and then flips it up there at 92. Cishek, typical kid. His home was about 75 miles from Boston, and he always imagined his backyard was Fenway Park. And one time he'd be Mo Vaughn peppering the roof with wiffle ball blasts, and later on he'd be no more Garcia Parra. He'd been with the Marlins since 2011. One and two. Two and two. In fact, Steve says that he has a poster of Nomar that's still in the wrapper. He doesn't ever to want it get ruined. So he's never unwrapped it. Two and two. And a little fly ball down the right field line going foul out of play. Matt just kind of pushed that thing. His body was going one way. You can understand it with Cishek kind of snaking that ball up to the plate. Two balls, two strikes. So Matt goes back with his gum and we have one out. Up north Braves five Giants nothing bottom of the eighth inning. Carl Crawford lined into a double play fly to left single to right. Driving in a run. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Dodgers lead six to one. The pitchers of record Josh Beckett and Jacob Turner. Beckett three outs away from his first win 
since a victory against Colorado back in 2012. 14 starts without a win and now he's three outs away from it. For young Jacob Turner however things get tougher as Crawford probably blisters this thing. Easy double and for a moment there it looked like he was inclined to try three but Bundy shut him down immediately. So Crawford a line drive double his second hit and the batter will be Justin Turner. Third baseman number 10 Justin Turner. The call blistered that thing. And again Stanton had a good distance to go to get to the ball. This is for a moment where Crawford started to shift into high gear but Lorenzo Bundy at third said nope that's far enough. So a one out double and here's Justin Turner. Jacob Turner stands to lose and that would mean young Jacob who will be 23 next week could be 0 and 10 in his career on the road. Strike to Justin. 0 and 1. Turner going the other way all three at bats. Fly to right, single to right center, fly to right. The fly ball in the sixth inning picked up Kemp, give him an RBI. Six runs, 11 hits for the Dodgers, one run, four hits for the Marlins. With that tremendous record at home, 17 and 5. They are in danger of going 3 and 15 on the road. Turner, Jennings, Ramos, Ciszek. Just off the plate. Roy Campanella had a great expression facing somebody like Cizek. He's a right hand hitter and he's coming side on by way of third, throwing 92. It's awfully hard to keep that left leg in there without bailing out, or as he used to call it, the jelly leg. Two and two. Three and two. Take another look at that delivery. Here he comes. There aren't very many pitches who frighten. Whoops. There goes Crawford on a foul ball, so he'll have to go back. I'll always remember Pee Wee Reese, who had a very long career. And Pee Wee said there was only one pitcher who ever frightened me, who actually scared me. And that was Ewell Blackwell of the Cincinnati Reds, who was very tall, very skinny, threw sidearm, looked like he threw around third base. Try that if you're a right hand batter. Fastball foul down the line. So Turner hanging tough, three and two the count. When the Marlins come up in the ninth inning, Salta Lamakia, Jones, and Osuna. If anybody gets on, Dietrich. Three and two to Justin. Butera on deck. Fastball grounded to first. Knocked down by Jones plenty of time. So Crawford moves over to third and with two out, Butera coming up. Catcher number 31, Drew. Dodgers scored five times in the sixth inning, once more in the seventh. The Marlins only run came in the seventh, and a pass ball set it up. In the Dodger bullpen, Jamie Wright loosening up. Brandon League made 10 pitches to retire the side in the eighth inning. 
And coming out on deck now, Andre Ethier. And a strike to Butera. On one. Change in that same deliberate way from 92 to 81. Yukara just did get a piece of it. Still on two. Fastball high. So two out, runner at third. With that delivery, the first thing you want to know about Ciszek and a runner at third, he does not have a wild pitch. Two and two. And ball four. Whoop. So Butera thought it was ball four, but he's coming back. Smiling, a little embarrassed. He's a very, very pleasant fellow. I'm sure Laz Diaz did not get upset over that. And instead, he gets a flare to left for a base hit and a run batted in. So Butera makes contact, scores Crawford, and the Dodgers now lead seven to one as Crawford arrives back safely in the dugout. And Andre Ethier will come up and bat for Brandon Lee. Little fly ball single to left for Drew Butera. So Beckett made 101 pitches. Chris Perez made 10 pitches. Brandon League made 10 pitches. And now here's Andre Ethier batting for Lee. And a strike. Owen won the count. Andre played last night, had three fly balls to left, one fly ball to right. Angry over the call. Owen won the count. Uribe still waiting for an at bat, and I'm sure they've been teasing him. And another strike. Owen two to Andre. Seven to one Dodgers. One and two the count. Dodgers had Figgins bat for Perez. He was hit by a pitch and scored. Ethier now batting for league. And Jamie Wright will be asked to pitch the ninth. And Andre fooled on that off speed pitch and down he goes. But the Dodgers get a run anyway on two hits. Butera drives it in. We go to the ninth, 7 1, Dodgers.
Winning 7-1 to one Dodgers. And be sure to spend Memorial Day with family and friends at Dodgers Stadium. Monday, May 26, Dodgers and Reds at 5-10. And the first 40,000 fans in attendance take home an Andre Ethier-themed barbecue apron presented by Farmer John. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Dodgers bring in Jamie Wright. He's their fourth pitcher of the night to try and get together and give Josh Beckett his first win of the year. Beckett went six and a third, made 101 pitches. Then Perez came in and made 10 pitches. Brandon Lee made 10. And now it's up to Jamie. Meanwhile, the Marlins will have Saul de Lamacchia, their catcher, followed by Garrett Jones, and then Michelle Osuna. Salty is 0 for 3 tonight, struck out twice. Dodgers load up the right side, switch hitter who bats left handed. And a strike, 0 oh and 1. Saul Damagia, who is fighting that severe slump, probably thinks every time he comes up to the plate, the count's 0 oh and 2. Oh my gosh, let's not show it, but there's somebody running on the field. So, timeout. Gonna take a little while to get him off the field. So timeout. Every now and then there's somebody who thinks he's more important than the 50,000 in the game. Maybe it's his moment in glory. And they will rush him off the field and that'll be that. It doesn't make any sense but. It's been done and in a moment he's gone. Meanwhile we see a smiling A.J. Ellis. He's directly behind Tim Wallach, hand up to his chin. You always find A.J. Ellis alongside Clayton Kershaw, so it's nice to see A.J. back. He's been catching in Albuquerque, and it won't be too long before he's back in action. Okay. The gentleman is gone. 0 and 1 the count to Salta La Macchia. Dodgers lead 7-1. Seven runs, 12 hits for the Dodgers. They bunched them up in the sixth inning. Five runs, five hits, and a walk. They had three doubles. Then Crawford double in the eighth inning. 0 and 1. And another strike. This is the tough part of playing baseball for a living. No balls and two strikes. One and two. Jared was a first round pick by the Braves back in 2003. Came up in 07. Then he went to the Rangers. Then to the Red Sox. This year with the Marlins. One and two. Slice down the left field line foul back into the crowd. Paid attendance tonight 50,349. A beautiful summer's evening. When the game started, it was 88 degrees. And the people forgot all about the weather. They're in the ninth inning up north. Braves five, Giants nothing. Two and two. We mentioned earlier that uh, Jared Salta Lamacchia and Josh Beckett had something in common. They both had the thoracic outlet syndrome, which affects circulation and had to have a rib removed. Two and two. And got him. So 
The struggle continues. Salty strikes out a third time. Yeah, you can understand how he feels. One away. And Garrett Jones will be the batter. First baseman, number 46, Garrett Jones. Garrett Jones grounded out, walked, and doubled to right. When Campanella said you have to be a lot of little boy in you, he also said you have to be a man with a lot of little boy in you. Part of being a man is going through what Salty's going through right now, I'm sure. One and one the count to Garrett Jones. Marcel Osuna on deck. When it's all said and done, the Marlins have one run on four hits. They might not have had the run except for the pass ball that was charged against Butera in the seventh inning. So the Dodgers got fine pitching from Beckett for six and a third, then Perez, then League. So now Josh Beckett is just two outs away from his first win since 2012. Although he has certainly pitched well enough to have picked up more than tonight's win. Came into this game with an earned run average of 2.8. Two balls, two strikes. Foul ball up along first. For the Marlins, pretty well kept in check. Stanton got to third in the fourth inning after a little roller up along third, and then he stole second. So he got to third. Dietrich got to third in the fifth inning. Jones finally scored in the seventh inning, and that's it. So they've never really had much of a rally. Two and two the count to Jones. So the Marlins coming face to face with the horrific thought they'll have three wins and 15 losses on the road. Ground ball, Gordon, short hop, backhand, gets him, and the Marlins down to their last out. So two out. And Marcel Osuna with his foot in the door. Struck out twice, fly to right. One run and four hits for Miami. And a strike. 0 and 1. Tomorrow night, final game with the Marlins and for the homestand. Then the Dodgers hit the road. They'll go to Arizona. Their record against the Diamondbacks right now seven wins and one loss. That's going to go foul out of play. Of course, the Dodgers happen to catch Arizona early. The 11th, 12th, 13th in Arizona, the 18th, 19th, 20th in Arizona, and a couple in Sydney, Australia. So we'll see whether Arizona has changed much. Dodgers now an out away from three and a half behind the Giants. And Josh Beckett, one out away from his first win. Beckett, Perez, League, and Wright. Still one and two. Say quite a success tonight from the opening scenes when Maritza Puig, Yasiel's mom, underhanded the ball to her son. That was the opening ceremonial pitch. Then with Yasiel's arm draped around her, he made the announcement, it's time for Dodger baseball, let's go. 
And the Dodgers now are a strike away from winning it seven to one. Considering the size of the crowd, the roars in the sixth and seventh innings, it has been a major success for Yasiel and the Dodgers. Two and two the count to Marcel Osuna. Fouled at the plate. He's still up there. Fifty thousand three hundred and forty nine. Hope you'll be out here with us tomorrow night for the last game of the homestand. Tomorrow the 14th of May the Dodgers will be back here on the 26th. Breaking ball missed. Three and two to Marcel. Derek Dietrich on deck. That close. Little foul ball. So Osuna will not go gentle into that good night. Not yet. Three and two the count. Meanwhile, Reed Johnson talking to Christian Yelich. Yelich shut down tonight. 0 for 4 without hitting a ball out of the infield. Did have a single and a home run last night. High foul out of play. Osuna will be looking or swinging at the tenth pitch of this at bat. Three and two. All right, it'll be the 11th pitch. Though Marcel not quite ready to say good night. Interesting if he has another long run of the at bat with Laz Diaz behind the plate. We mentioned it way back early. Diaz was the plate umpire when Alex Cora had the 18 pitch at bat. Three and two. And a big chopper wide a third. The long throw by Henry. Too late. Osuna runs exceptionally well. Hanley made a great job to make it that close. Turner tried to get to the ball. Couldn't do it. And that made it a virtual base hit. Especially against most shortstops. But Hanley did make it close. That's where Turner missed and now from the grass. And Osuna racing and just does beat it. So Osuna a single to short on an 11 pitch at bat. Very close. Puig in right field sweating it out thinking that was the third out. And going to second as Dietrich checks in is Osuna. The defensive indifference no stolen base. Derek Dietrich fly to center single to center and walk one for two made an error on a base hit when deep behind second got to the ball off balance throw awry one and one coming out on deck Jeff Baker Baker with a home run and seven runs batted in one for six as a pinch hitter. If he gets the chance to bat for c -Sheck. Two and one the count to Dietrich. Beckett, Perez, League and Wright. Turner, Jennings, Ramos, c -Sheck for the Marlins.
Dietrich one for two with a walk and two balls and one strike. Two and two. The right was able to strike out Saul the Lamakia and get Jones on a ground ball. Osuna gave him quite a battle, 11 pitches, and then singled. Now he's two and two with Dietrich. Fouled away. So Jamie unable to get that third strike. Lost the battle with Osuna. And now Dietrich hacking away and holding the count two and two. So the deuce is a wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, runner at second. And the Dodgers lead seven to one. Osuna or later. The 2 2 pitch. Ball three. Baker waiting on deck. Dietrich with his foot in the door. And a high pop fly. It will be Turner. And that's it. No runs. One hit. A man left. The totals on the game for the Dodgers. Seven runs. Twelve hits. Marlins one run five hits two errors and to cap off a perfect night for him we would certainly say the player of the game Yasiel Puig two hits made the announcement about the fact that it's time for Dodger baseball he had a single a double and a walk scored knocked in one and all in all had himself a big night and had to make his mom feel wonderful that's the best she can do a little shy handshake from the crowd. We'll give you that little shy handshake. Wish you a pleasant good evening, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Until then, a very pleasant good evening, everybody.